Thank you for joining us for Trust Building and Risk Taking and in Innovative Initiatives. My name is JC Moriyama. I'm the Student Services Portfolio Manager for a team called Assets, or Arts and Sciences Support of Education through Technology here at the beautiful campus of the University of Colorado Boulder. As a team lead for the Student Success Incubator team, I'm here to present a perspective from one of four teams that you hear more about today. Hi, I'm Blair Young, and I am the Innovation Catalyst for the Asset Innovation Incubator. I work in partnership with JC and several other staff and faculty to steward the three-year pilot that is the Asset Innovation Incubator. I'm really excited to share more about this emergent project with you in our session today. If you had to quickly allocate $500,000 to tackle the question, how might we improve the undergraduate learning experience by getting students out of their seats and into active learning, what would you do? Asset saw an opportunity to invite arts and sciences faculty into a uniquely collaborative environment where they could nurture and grow innovative teaching and learning ideas and to make a mark on the robust innovation and entrepreneurship landscape on our campus. This experimental and emergent initiative is now a locus for change at the college, challenging perceptions of where, how, and by whom innovation happens and creating new pathways for partnership across disciplines and institutional hierarchies. Among four cross-disciplinary teams composed of faculty, staff, graduate and undergraduate students, the incubator explores its driving question while designing, prototyping, and iterating ways to improve the undergraduate experience through active learning. Each of the four teams is uniquely focused on the future of higher education, including in metacognition and well-being, multimodal participatory publishing, student success, and inclusive data science. Before we move on, we encourage you to pause the presentation and take a few minutes to brain write what an inno innovation catalyzing how might we question would look like for your unit at your institution. Think of the most evocative, seemingly unsolvable, challenging questions and jot them down to refer back to later. At the end of the session, we hope participants will Consider how innovation and emergent practices can serve as a powerful catalyst in solving wicked problems. Feel invigorated to embrace change and disruption. And leave with inspiration and tools to ideate ways to enact innovation and disruption. Coming up, JC and I will share more about our own experiences with the Asset Innovation Incubator, as well as highlight testimonials from various stakeholders in the incubator including faculty participants, leadership, graduate students, and undergraduate students. Being a part of the incubator project has been a highlight of my career. It's such a unique and rewarding experience. To bring our team's ideas from something that was once a pipe dream to fruition. But I'll tell you a year ago, I didn't share the same sentiments. I'm not a risk taker. And so the emergent nature of, of disruption was really overwhelming. And I struggled with the lack of structure and the amorphous nature of an incubator project. And I kept thinking to myself, how can I lead and build trust within my team if all I could think about was failure? And it occurred to me that everyone on my team was taking a risk by being a part of this project. And so I began to embrace the unknown. And in time, my team naturally became cohesive and started taking on tasks of their own. And through the project, I found myself forging even more connections around campus with my colleagues who are working on similar projects. And so these colleagues came from areas like the Language Learning Center, academic coaching, and other student affair professionals. And together, we worked to support each other's endeavors. And this proved to be this proved to be essentially critical, especially during the highlight of the pandemic, where, like others. I didn't feel disconnected. In fact, I felt more connected to my peers than ever before. And so now I can tell you that my fear of failure and the unknown has turned into genuine excitement. I'm excited to connect with colleagues and create a space to talk about gamification pedagogy. I'm excited to work with undergraduate students and have them engaged in the classroom as undergraduate teaching assistants. And finally, I'm excited to embrace the future of the unknown as we forge into years two and three. 
Hi, it's Blair. I'm the Innovation Catalyst for the Asset Innovation Incubator. And I'm going to share a little bit with you about my experience working on the incubator. My job is to steward this initiative over its three-year pilot period. And um, by nature, I love uh, new emergent projects where you're not really sure what's going to happen next. Um, I love those types of things. And um, so it was a, a no-brainer for me to just jump in with two feet into this work. Um, however, I uh, want to focus specifically on the theme of trust building because I knew that uh, some of the um, community members that I'd be working with weren't necessarily ready to jump in with two feet to the unknown um, that was this new project. So I will say that it was exciting for me to bring together both um, change facilitation and uh, participatory community engagement under this umbrella of trust building that I embarked on early on in the project. And um, I, I guess it's actually fortunate that uh, even from the beginning, I was working with a lot of really busy people. So I had to do a lot of that work online, um, sending out opportunities for folks involved in the incubator, faculty and staff and graduate students to give their input and participate in ways um, where we all can be together in a room. And, you know, I learned a lot early on pre-COVID, things that worked and things that didn't work. And there were definitely some things that I tried that didn't work well that I think people just kind of, you know, saw my request and couldn't quite understand what I was asking for. So I had to be really responsive to those question marks. And, um, you know, now I'm very thankful that I can lean on the types of technology that we have available to us, like Flipgrid and Padlet and um, some of those really uh, interactive ways to both ask the community for input and create community by sharing voices and perspectives. Um, which leads to trust building and um, higher engagement and higher buy-in. It's been really fun and it's something that I love to talk about. Uh, it could take me a lot more than two minutes. Um, so if anyone is interested in reaching out to me and talking more about it, I'm open to it. Thanks. Hi, my name is David Brown. I'm the Divisional Dean for the Social Sciences and oversee part of ASSET. It's been a real pleasure to be part of the Innovation Incubator. It really started, my role in the, in the incubator started when Mark Werner and I decided that we thought we'd try something different. Instead of doing the usual call for proposals uh, in order to put together different initiatives to enhance technology in the classroom, we thought we'd build teams. We'd put together a very inclusive effort to get people from all sorts of disciplines to talk with each other, to share their ideas, and put a community together that scales up the sorts of things that are happening in terms of technology and pedagogy in the School of Arts and Sciences. So with that in mind, we put together these groups. And from the very first day, uh, I remember there being uh, sheer delight by the faculty who were getting together around uh, very similar topics, but from very different disciplines. And so one of the most rewarding things that has come from this, at least from my perspective, is to seeing faculty and staff from all over the college participating together towards one purpose. And it's been a lot of fun to watch. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda McAndrew. I am the asset lead for the CAMP uh, project in the Innovation Incubator. Uh, CAMP stands for the Collective to Advance Multimodal Participatory Publishing. It's a, a handful, but it's a fun acronym because we get to do lots of cute things with CAMP. But uh, my role is uh, to hopefully inspire the uh, members of the camp team who each have their individual projects uh, that they're working on um, and to help them see uh, connections and intersections in the projects that they're working on around uh, digital literacy, information literacy, uh, open education, open education resources, uh, and how we can include students and student voices in uh, authentic learning and uh, publishing uh, projects that are 
either their own or in conjunction with faculty. Um, I have um, particularly uh, been excited to be involved in how we can um, encourage innovation in higher education, and that's what I'm most invested in um, in this project. Hi, my name is Beth Osnes. I'm an associate professor at the University of Colorado, and I am part of the Innovative in Incubator um, team. I am the faculty advisor for ASSET, and I'm also a participant in this Innovative Incubator. One of the moments that I've really enjoyed is um, when COVID hit. I had an assignment that I had my students um, translating top climate solutions for fifth grade reading level. And once COVID hit, I decided to make this assignment much broader and to um, translate and work with my students digitally to publish and disseminate all top 100 solutions identified by Project Drawdown, my main partner in doing this. So this project has really helped me arrange this process in a way that was full of digital literacy learning for my students and myself. I'm Vilja Holden. I'm in the history department and I do various kinds of digital humanities work. And in the asset innovation incubator, I am part of the data science team. And uh, what I think has been, has been most rewarding, most interesting about the experience of being on that team has been seeing how other people think about the same questions that I think about. So we've been trying to create a course and really kind of a curricular program that contains, uh, that, that marries data science and humanities and seeing how other people think about that has really helped me sharpen my own thinking about it. So thanks. Hello, my name is Michael Schneider. I'm a graduate assistant with ASSET, working on data analytics and data visualization. The part I find interesting has been watching the group navigate their differing viewpoints on what data is when it comes to data science. So, for example, the language arts, we have text. So, analyzing Shakespeare, you're actually looking at written word. Or, from the biology department, maybe you're looking at DNA or looking at different encodings of genetic material or going over to the math department you actually just have numbers so you have raw numbers that you're trying to process for events um, or astronomy you're looking at the mass of stars and looking at how different things play on a cosmic scale all this is data science but what's been fascinating is how the group has tried to merge these different views of what data is and the form of data to create a unifying data science course so seeing that process emerge has been very fascinating for me. Hi, I'm David Paradis. I teach history at the University of Colorado, and I've been in the Asset Incubator Student Success Group. And we're um, looking at a variety of different strategies to improve student success, one of which focuses on student engagement. And uh, I was a little skeptical about this one way to engage students, which involved reacting to the past. I, I teach history and it seemed like a good idea, but when you do reacting, you turn your classroom over uh, to the students and, and let them take on their roles and you sit back and sort of moderate and really stay out of the way. And it, it sounded a little scary, quite frankly. Uh, you know, So this would be uh, risk taking, I guess you could say. And I looked it up, uh, teachers aren't known for risk takers in case you wonder. Uh, we're, we're not on the list of top 25 risk taking uh, professions. But uh, in any case, um, I, I, I've engaged in enough preliminary sessions. I'm going to give it a try this uh, this fall. My name is Becca Ciancanelli, and I'm the Inclusive Pedagogy Lead for the Center for Teaching and Learning. And I joined the Metacognition and Mindfulness Project through the incubator about um, a year and a half ago. And it's been a pretty fantastic experience to be on a collaborative project very unusual to feel that everybody in the project was included and we find ways to work together as opposed to competing with each other. Um, our team has a broad range of experience of um, metacognition strategies, mindfulness strategies, wellness strategies. We're learning from each other and coming up with this really neat tangible product that professors will be able to use to get more feedback from their students, to engage in, in multiple different formats, to to support them in their learning and their well-being. So I think it's going to have a tremendous impact um, on how we move forward. And it feels um, important that I'm working across campus with different people 
on this project and really getting a chance to hear from their perspective how students are doing and what students are working through. Um, the asset team always makes it fun and they bring a lot of structure and support so you feel like you're concretely moving forward and getting things done. Um, so I really appreciate being part of the experience. Hello, my name is Mark Werner and I lead our asset team and I help shape and guide and support the incubator process. My experience with the project is it's been very uh, rewarding and invigorating to watch people from different disciplines come together for a common purpose. I've been really impressed by the risks that all the participants have taken in trusting one another and in the trusting the team facilitators and also in forgiving us when we have fits and starts and restarts in what we're doing. It's been very inspiring and instructive for me as a leader to watch Blair respect and honor all participants, um, clearly and transparently acknowledge the real and difficult challenges they face, and then watching her walk alongside those who dare to lean into those challenges. It's been personally challenging for me um, to experience the turmoil that comes from helping facilitators unpack, address, and lean into the concerns about what might go wrong and to work with the conflicts that emerge over concerns of equity of resources and equity of expectations for the team. As I step back and reflect, I'm very glad to have been a part of this project, and I really think it's one of the most important things we're doing on campus today. Thank you. We encourage you to pause the presentation and think about your stakeholders. Imagine what multiple stakeholders in your unit at your institution might say about their experience in an innovative initiative. Think about your strongest advocates, your loudest naysayers, and those whose voices are critical to the conversation. Next, we're gonna have a short dialogue with JCM Blair. During this dialogue, we're gonna talk you through a couple of key moments in the formation of the Asset Innovation Incubator. So Blair, as the innovation catalyst, you stewarded this initiative from the ground up. Can you give me a couple of examples about how this project impacted the campus community? Sure, I'd be happy to, JC. We do have a communication plan, but we've kept it very open for organic opportunities for connection and networking across campus. And a lot of that has happened through the work of the individual teams that are part of the Innovation Incubator. I have a couple of examples I can give you. Our inclusive data science team wrote a big NSF grant uh, this summer, and they re reached out to a lot of units on campus that are focused on inclusion and diversity uh, to create a pipeline for students who are traditionally underserved by STEM disciplines to bring them into the fold and to really keep them actively engaged in uh, the emphasis of the NSF grant. So we were excited to have those organic relationships uh, emerge from the grant writing process. Another great example is from your team, the student success team. Um, we had an opportunity to work with Altec over the summer, which is um, our langu language technology learning center. Mm -hmm. Because your team is focused on gamification of learning, it opened up this great opportunity to work with the language center and um, explore their use of um, VR, virtual reality, in language learning. So those are just two examples of all the wonderful opportunities and creative work that we can do that can make an impact across our entire campus. JC, as a staff lead of a faculty team, what have you experienced with your team in terms of wins, lessons learned, and maybe surprising pivots? Oh my gosh, there are so many. Through this incubation pro incubator project, We've experienced so many wins, lessons learned, and pivotal moments. So in terms of wins, um, I think the biggest win was that events just happened on its own. It naturally occurred. It was completely off script. And one example is how one of my team members, who's really passionate about reacting to the past pedagogy, led a faculty book club off of the book Minds on Fire. And we had 15 people from around campus. Mm -hmm joining in our discussion. And so it was a really great way to raise awareness about gamification pedagogy and to start a conversation. Um, and speaking about conversations, another surprising sort of off script event happens where one of the participants from the faculty book club became so inspired and he ended up facilitating his own book club using the book, Designing Your Life. Now, it isn't necessarily 
support gamification pedagogy, but he really wants to embrace this idea about student success. And so he planned and he executed this idea within three weeks. Um, in terms of pivots and lessons learned, you know, with any project, we've experienced a natural attrition of team members. And this attrition has not only impacted my team, the student success team, it's also impacted the wellness and metacognition team as well. Um, I think we can certainly say that COVID has had an impact on some members more than others. And, you know, in terms of pivots, my team quickly realized that we were down two people and we refocus our energies and we're going to carry forth through the second and third years. So now that we've discussed how the project has impacted the broader campus and faculty, how do you envision students being involved? Well, we're really excited in what we're calling year two of the incubator pilot to significantly involve students in each of the teams. And we had a taste of what that would be like this summer. Um, during COVID, we had an opportunity to bring some students in on the early end of the incubator to launch a student challenge across campus inviting students, so students designed and launched this challenge and they invited their peers to submit ideas about how they could stay connected on a campus that is largely remote and hybrid during the pandemic. And I will say from that experience, they were so engaged and really took ownership of the project that they designed on behalf of the incubator. And I'm anticipating as we roll out student involvement for each of the teams that we'll see something similar. We do have three interns who are working with our multimodal participatory publishing team starting this fall. And I can already see just incredible energy from those students and that um, their voices will make a huge impact on that particular team and those projects. Um, another example is from our inclusive data science team. They are going to be surveying students this fall and then um, recruiting students to help actually develop modules for the course that they'll be delivering starting in fall 2021. So we're gonna see different uh, student involvement across all four teams, but we will work to ensure that it's meaningful and impactful across all four of those projects. We encourage you to pause the presentation and take a few moments to diagram opportunities, barriers, and fears associated with disruptive innovation in your unit, department, or college at your institution. Thank you for joining us. We've enjoyed sharing our knowledge and experiences with you, and we hope this session was informative, inspirational, and provided you with a diversity of perspectives. And before we leave, we'd like to challenge you to consider how you might act upon these objectives of the session. So how might you consider how innovation and emerging practices can serve as a powerful catalyst in solving wicked problems. Well, we encourage you to visit your how might we statement that you generated during the session. Challenge yourself and a group of colleagues to create an exhaustive list of ideas. Getting as many people into the room will help you generate a rich and diverse set of data. Second, how might you feel invigorated to embrace change and disruption? Well, think back to the opportunities and excitements that you diagrammed earlier in the session. We encourage you to keep visiting, discussing, and iterating on these moments as you pursue your innovative initiatives. And finally, how might you leave with inspiration and tools to ideate ways to enact innovation and disruption? Reflect on the themes that the, innovate, that the innovation incubator participants spoke to in their testimonials and ask yourself if any of these videos resonated with you. Or think about how their ideas might become an innovative challenge at your institution. And finally, identify tools that you already have in your, your toolbox and what tools you might need to develop to address these themes. Remember, tools can be anything from processes, technologies, people, resources, or institutional knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Blair or myself. Good luck with innovation at your institution, and we look forward to hearing from you.